Ooh, what's going on YouTube? It's Donnie Beer all day. Today, um, I'm sharing with you guys something extremely special. I mean, extremely special. As you can see, it's the Condor Gray Pioneer buoy, but a little different. So, I never not take a blade outside to review, um, but this one... I am not taking outside to review. Everything is going to happen right here, which means this isn't a review because you can't review a knife without using it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over this knife, show you what it is and why it is compared to the one I have and the one you can buy online, which after this, you might want to go buy one online. So this knife is so special because this was sent to me by the designer himself, by Walter Matthews. Um, what makes that so special, D-Bad? Well, um, you can see how he signed it. He even drew my logo, right? There's his, his uh, autograph there. It says a unique, uh, a unique, a unique, I can read. A unique item for a unique friend. Enjoy this historic prototype, buddy. So by that, you can tell that this is a, is a prototype. So the prototype is a one-off. This is the only one ever made. He put, his, he put his design together and he brought it to his people over at Condor and said, this is what I want to do. And they made up the first one. And after making up the first one, then they get to see what they like or don't like and this and that. And then they go ahead with the actual production pieces. So this, there was only one right now on the planet. And this is the only one that not only has ever been made, but will ever be made. The rest are all the production pieces that um, we're going to go over. So this thing is especially unique and especially awesome, really. And now a little bit about the um, about the designer. Everybody knows uh, El Salvador and Condor Blades. But Walter Matthews, um, who designed this knife, this guy, he teaches outdoor survival skills. Um, he is an amazing, an amazing survivalist. Uh, if you go onto his Instagram, it's, I believe, WM underscore survival. Uh, check him out. The guy is amazing. You could look him up there and he's probably a bunch of other places you can find him. Um, but he is fantastic. If, if you have the chance and the opportunity to join one of his classes, and here's a heads up, I might be joining him on one. Um, uh, I, I, yeah, I might be able to go as a guest uh, with him. We'd already talked about it. So it could be a really, really awesome, uh, awesome trip out. And I'll be able to video and, and show you guys. I won't be able to show you all the techniques because then he's not going to be able to get people to go to the school if I just put it up there. But um, um, amazing, amazing guy. Not only that, but he is a knife designer. Right, so he's a knife user, a knife designer, knows it all, but he's also a soldier, right? And he is not just a soldier, but a combat soldier. He he did his work all over the world with special forces and, and anybody and everybody you can think of that meant something to be badass, he did it and did it with. Um, so the the guy is just phenomenal. He's an artist, a hero, a survivalist, fantastic, and he's just a really good dude. He's a really good guy. Um, as you can tell, I mean, he sent me this, uh, not only that, but he sent me the Condor fighter, which, aha, which, aha, which I have right here. He signed this one. Now this one isn't his design, but I won a contest on Instagram and he sent me that this one will go outside and get tested. Sweet little blade. Um, but until then, we're just going to go over this guy. So what makes the prototype different than the production piece and that's what we're going to go about and one thing i can tell you is before this video is finished this knife just might replace your buck 119 this is everything the buck 119 is can do and does but maybe a little bit better and i'm going to show you why so the difference between the sheaths between this one in production is going to be these little straps right here. These will not be on the production. Um, what what had happened is he was thinking about a way to carry a ferro rod that would be different than the standard, where you put a little attachment on there. Um, and as he was going over everything and, and rethinking and rehashing, he realized that sometimes less is better. 
And he was right. I mean, there, there's a good shot if you're literally, if you're going through the brush and you're going through things, you don't want something that's going to hang in here with a little ring on it or, or anything that can get caught in things. And by trial and error, if you put um, some cordage in here, because it's sticking out, it's not going through like lashing holes. When you walk through tight brush, it's going to get stuck. It's going to pull. It's going to slow you down. It's going to create drag on your body and just not be overall great for survival. So he decided to do away with these and the sheath is going to look just like this, but without these two guys here. And it is a great, great retention sheath. Typical Condor leather sheath, so very well made, so very well smelling. But let's get into this blade. So the blade itself, and of course I'm not gonna take it out because he did sign it, but the blade itself is going to um, is going to be a little bit different than this one where the grip is going to remain the same. Now, one thing about this grip I have to mention to you is unlike the K-Bar where it does a stick tang, a really skinny stick tang, this is actually a full tang knife. It is only, I think, uh, two millimeters of leather above the tang on this part. And the rest is all leather in here, which creates this amazing amazing squishability, I guess you could say. I can really feel it when I squish my fingers into it. Um, it's a round grip, and I'm going to get into why that's not a bad thing. Um, but with the tang, it's going to go only two millimeters, so it's literally right here. The tang is all the way to the end on both sides. And what I'm going to do, he sent me his original artwork, and I'm going to show you the artwork of the tang right now. Hold on. So that right there, automatically the Tang is better than the Tang on both the Buck and the K-Bar, um, which is fantastic. This is pretty much a true full Tang. The only thing is you can't see it. It's right there. You just can't see it. But that's what's going to make this knife extremely strong and stronger than most um, leather stack handles you're going to see because most leather stack handles are going to be either a stick Tang or a rat tail. So this one sets itself far above the competition when it comes to that. You have an actual real tang in this knife. That is fantastic. Now the blade length is about seven inches. Um, and you're looking, I believe, at four and three quarters somewhere or four and a half. Um, I think it's four and a half in the in the end to end with a four and a quarter inside grip, which means big guys guess what our hands fit in there look at that there's even a little pinch of room right there um so you have a very very good amount of grip to go with this knife which i was very very pleased about very 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 now it's completely round except right here you can almost feel a nice flat spot and what that does is give you just a little bit better traction than you do on a traditional round handled knife now You'd be thinking, yeah, but round handle, it's how you're going to get a grip and this and that. I don't know. Rambo did. So, but what makes this so good as a round grip is what he accompanied with the round grip. Generally, when you're going to find a knife like this, you're going to see a guard here or an up and a, a, a upper and a lower guard. And then just here is going to be round. It's going to look like that, right? What he did is he did teardrop guards on both ends. This one has a lanyard hole. On both ends, he did teardrops. What does a teardrop do, D-Bad? Well, I'm glad you asked. So this shape right here is to put a finger on. So when you're using the knife, everything is controlled through the guard, right? That teardrop shape is actually going to help you manipulate how you want to use it. And what he did so good in the rear and what I'll do is I'll even grab one of my own designs so this is my D-Bad mission one right so you'll notice that I did a double teardrop this is my version of a Rambo knife but a Rambo knife has cuts like this and then it has a screw uh, screwdrivers on each end the cuts aren't exactly teardrops but they do add a little bit but I wanted something better I wanted a teardrop and the reason is because when you have a round handle, you want control. So with mine, I have an upper guard so I can control from the top, I can control from the bottom, but as far as the rear, I just have a flat 
pommel, flat, round pommel. So I don't have on his where you can control it this way. Mine doesn't have that. So I think that is a, um, a really, really great piece of the puzzle that he put into his knife was having it also here because now from the reverse grip, I can use it my thumb and control. So if I'm doing, um, if I'm making like bow holes or anything like that or notches so I can make a fireboard, I have absolute control up here. I also can choke up this way and use my finger, look at that perfect shape, down to do the same thing depends on just what's more comfortable for you this or this what is undeniable is how comfortable it is in this position and you can see how the finger how look at look at how perfectly uh, angled it is to where it's going to fit a finger no matter what you are having full traction another thing is if you wanted to put your thumb on top and this is swedge not sharpened so you're not going to cut yourself if you wanted to put your thumb on top i can now take my finger right here because look at this shape and I can manipulate all the cutting and grinding that I need to so if I was going to to cut I can literally just go ahead this isn't even properly sharpened this is a prototype I didn't think it was going to do that but so now if this is wood I'm going through here right and I'm making my holes if this is wood I can now just take and carve because my hand is working uh, unilaterally with this amazing teardrop guard. This is a really smart grip. It is a really smart grip. When you have a round grip, you can put your hand anywhere, anyhow, do anything with a round grip. That's the one good thing about a round grip is you have multiple grip positions that don't tell your hand where to go. It's automatic when you grab it it's the same here same here same here same here no matter what the magic of this knife is what he did with the teardrops so that is a fantastic piece of hell yeah to go into this knife so the one when i look on the website it looks to me like the belly might be slightly bigger which would give it a little better chopping action. But what's also gonna be better on the original than the prototype is going to be the overall front weight because the blade thickness changes. This one is only three millimeters, right? You can see how skinny it is. The actual one that you're gonna get is four and a half millimeters. Now you're talking about a heftier knife, a nice thick blade, and it's going to increase the weight here. So you're gonna have a lot more um, action in the chop you're going to be able to get it around a lot better because all buoys are fighting knives first. Don't forget, it's not just a camp knife. It's a protect your ass knife. You got black bear and, and, and whatever else that can come at you. Bigfoot, he's there. You need something to protect yourself with. With this being three millimeters, this wouldn't be the oppor opportunist knife for, um, for that kind of thing. Slashing, yeah, it's going to be a, a good slasher because it's light and thin. Um, but it's not going to have the hitting power. The one that you can buy, that I keep pointing because it's on the screen behind you. The one you can buy does have the hitting power. It's thicker. It is wonderful. The other thing that's going to um, be different is this one was 1095. And the reason he wanted 1095 is because if you've ever tried to use a blade or a piece of steel to strike spark with like a flint, 1095 sparks really freaking well um but um over at condor he can't, they can't do 1095 thicker than this it's the stock that they have at 1095 so what they did is he brought it down to 1075 1075 with the the heat treats that condor does fantastic ask anybody who's got a condor blade how much they've had problems with their blade and they're going to tell you i don't think i've had any problems it really is good steel. It works. There's a reason Cold Steel used 1075. Condor uses 1075. So many other knife companies use 1075 because it's just a really good good steel. 1075, 1084, 1095. You can't go wrong with any of those because they heat treat so freaking nicely. Um, so that's what you're going to get out of that. Same, same length. And this might be the same. I don't really know. It just, it could be an optical illusion the way it looks on the page. It looks like it's a little thicker, but it might not be. So now you're going to see these two swedged areas right here. This isn't a wedge 
grind. It goes on both sides, bringing you a nice wedge. What that's going to do is you have ferro rod, uh, rod striking, and I don't have ferro rod on me, but think about this as a ferro rod. You can strike your ferro rod, grind your ferro rod, do whatever you're going to do. If you don't like to be that far away from your ferro rod, if you want to be close, you have two points. Some people are different the way they do it, so we put on both points. What else you can use this for? If you need to clean meat off a bone, um, if you're cleaning fish, if you're debarking a piece of wood because you need tinder, once you take that bark off, this thing is going to start scraping really fine little pieces of fluff off that wood, and it's going to absolutely assist you in making one hell of a fire. So this thing is a one-all, do-all, similar to the Buck 119. You can use it for big game skinning. You can even choke up on it because I can put a pinch grip right here on that teardrop, put my finger all the way to the front, and now I can skin something smaller. So it really, that I'm telling you, this, this teardrop um, guard is just fantastic. Because it doesn't go over the top, I can press my hand nice and flat here, hold that, control it, and it is freaking awesome. I'm really impressed with this because it's the first American-style buoy that Walter put out, and um, he nailed it. He absolutely freaking lootly nailed it it's it's something that would have made Jim Bowie proud to carry you know what I mean it's just a really not it's just not only a good looking knife it's a beautiful knife but it works in every freaking aspect and this one isn't even as good as the one you can actually buy this one is second place right so if you get over to Condor and what I'll do is I'll put the link to the Gray Pioneer buoy down here um get over there and really check it out because this thing is fantastic. It really is a good knife. It's well in the hand, and I'd be excited to to feel the other one because of the thicker steel. I would love to feel the weight change because I, I guarantee that one is going to swing so nice. But um, I would take this knife, no holds barred, and everybody knows how much I love the Buck 119. I think it is freaking amazing. I would take this, that one, over the Buck 119. And that's hands down honesty. That is honesty. Um, I, 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 he had enough confidence in this design that he sent it to a designer who was picky and said, go ahead, I dare you. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? He's challenging me to find something wrong. This knife is just very, very well done. It is extremely well designed. There's nothing it doesn't need, everything it does. It's just a really, really good camp knife, camp, uh, camp hunting uh, type style. Um, it, so it's going to be camp hunting, fighting, one all, do all type thing. It's just a really, really nice blade. So to Walter Matthews, first of all, my brother, thank you so much. This means the world to me. This is going to be one of those um, treasured knives. And I don't really have knives that <coughs> I display. This is going to be a knife I display. Um, this is just fantastic, and I just might have to reach out and try and get me one of those ones that I can use, because I believe that much in this knife. <clears throat> I am crack a over. I just had lasagna, um, but it is it, it is really really nice. If you are a fan of Bowie knives, especially, and you don't want something crazy for the camp because you want something that you can actually handle and use. Full tang, guys. Full tang. So this is the Gray Pioneer Bowie Knife from Condor. And I have to say, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Hi, I'm Donnie B. All day. Till next knife.